Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we're gonna be reviewing a movie. I haven't done this in a while. I used to do movie reviews all the time. I will post a couple links here, 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 wherever, and you can go check those out. I wanted to do this movie review because I feel it's very relevant to current events and what might be coming in the future. So stick with me for that. So before we get into that, I just wanna make a comment. I got a lot of comments on the last video about how the tactical guy in the tactical versus gray man video wasn't tactical enough. Well, the thing is here in Canada, I don't wanna be sporting Kevlar combat gloves and some kind of uh, plate carrier, you know, body armor type thing, which would make it a lot more tactical in a militaristic sense. I can't be donning that kind of stuff walking around the streets of Canada. I'm gonna be maybe doing some reviews of this kind of stuff in the future, but uh, I just wanted to remind you guys that those terms are relative terms. Gray man, tactical, they're gonna mean different things in different places. There was plenty of comments talking about how in the South, everybody wears camo, you know, like everybody wears the, what's the real tree camo. Like if you go into like a rural environment where there's lots of hunters and stuff, everybody's wearing real tree. So in that environment, you know, you're going to stand out if you're not wearing real tree. So it's really, you have to find that cultural baseline. Okay. And you have to try to best approximate it. Everybody's wearing flannel shirts, drives a pickup truck. It has a beard. Then you should try to emulate that to the best of your capability. So let's talk a bit about this movie here. There's a lot to talk about with this movie. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to review this film is because it got some really bad reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. I think for a long time, Rotten Tomatoes has been an unreliable uh, source for assessing whether or not a movie is good. Probably a few years back, things must have changed over there and everything became very politically influenced. So the fact that Rotten Tomatoes gave this movie 11%, okay, essentially a one out of 10. They gave the movie a one out of 10. Just think about that for a second. If, to me, a one out of 10 is something that, you know, some guy shot on his phone in, in portrait mode with a $50 budget. That should be a one out of 10. This movie, as bad as it may have been in terms of the character development and just the, the story in general and the plot and all that, as bad as it was, it wasn't a one out of 10, okay? Anything which is uh, written by Michael Bay and it was a big Hollywood production should at least get a three, just for the sake of the fact that the cinematography is decent. It's a professionally done movie, okay? So it's not a one out of 10. So that got me thinking, why are they giving this movie a one out of 10? Well, obviously the reasons are political. And I say obviously because that's the only thing I can make of it because there's a lot of worse movies that they've given far better scores. And when I say they, Rotten Tomatoes has its set of flamboyant movie critics, which they're the arbiters of what's considered good and bad. And the main reasons for their criticism of this movie is they thought that the timing was wrong. One thing you need to remember is that this movie was made post COVID. So it was made just in the last few months while all this stuff was going down, while there was lockdowns, while there was restrictions on how many people you could have in one place at any given time. So a lot of the scenes are shot with no more than two people at once on the screen. So that's just something to keep in mind. The reason why this movie is so intriguing to me is that the basic setting, the basic premise of the movie is compelling, it's intriguing. And the basic premise is this, is that in the next couple of years, this COVID thing does not get better, okay? It basically spirals out of control and gets worse and worse. And then they're on this thing called COVID-23, which has a much higher fatality rate. I think it's like a 53% fatality rate. If you get it, you're dead in 48 hours. 10 million people are dying every year just in the United States alone. So it's a big deal, all right? They got these quarantine zones and all of the authoritarianism that we've seen so far has been drastically intensified. So this is why I think that, you know, they're, they're trying to downplay this movie and sweep it under the rug because this could potentially be where things are going. Uh, you gotta think, I've said before that this thing is gonna mutate. You know, we had the, what is it? Not the ferrets, what were they called? The mink mutations. Then we had the mutations uh, that are going on in Britain. And apparently this virus mutates slower than the flu, but it still mutates and it's zoonotic. So it's going in and out of species. So there is, you know, that potential that this thing could 
spiral out of control. But what it's really saying in this movie is that were there to be a serious virus, okay, like an airborne Ebola or something like that, which really did kill 20% of the people who got it and above, something that was really lethal. Imagine the lengths that the government would go to to uh, restrict movement and restrict personal rights and freedoms in order to preserve the greater good, right? So that's kind of what this movie was getting at and it had the effect of really showing the government and the authorities as being very antagonistic, uh, whether that was the police or the what they call in the movie, the Department of Sanitation. <laughs> They're basically the ones that come and scoop you up if you test positive for the virus, okay? So everybody's in lockdown, everybody's uh, stuck in the city in martial law, and everybody for some reason is using an LG Wing phone. If you haven't seen the LG Wing, I'll post a picture of it here. Basically, I think it's a phone which is likely going to fail. Has some cool features, but LG was obviously a big sponsor in making this movie become a reality. And uh, apparently everybody has a thermal imager on their phone in the future. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Maybe in the future, everybody's gonna have a thermal imager on their phone so that they can scan themselves daily to see if they're sick. Not that that's entirely 100% accurate anyways, because you can be hot for a variety of reasons. So that's something to keep in mind is that they're they're projecting in this video in this movie that everybody's phone in the future is going to have a built-in scanner or thermal imager on it which is going to be able to determine whether or not you have a virus just by you looking at it every morning and if you don't get your scan then the Department of Sanitation comes out and either nabs you or forces you to take the scan or takes takes you to the Q zone, which is basically this big slump, okay? Because only 0.1% of people in the movie are actually immune and everybody else is either in lockdown or in these Q zones, okay? Which are basically slums where everybody's just dying. And I think the majority of people are in these Q zones. Now, the people who are immune are called munis, and they're actually looked down on by pretty much everybody. Nobody likes them because, of course, they, they're immune. They have these immunity bracelets. They can go in wherever they want. And, of course, even the police who wear proper personal protective equipment, okay, they're not wearing these nonsense masks. That's how you know we're going to be in a real serious pandemic when they start busting out the Ebola gear, the level four or uh, level, what is it, level A, I can't remember the exact hazmat uh, classification, but the highest level of hazmat protection, okay? I'm talking a hazmat suit, like a haz suit, and a full-on full-face respirator, okay? Now, one of the things that this movie also talks about is how the rich, they can circumnavigate these uh, police checkpoints, and they're able to travel and if you're wealthy enough, you can buy one of these immunity bracelets, which will allow you to travel freely from place to place, okay? So if you're wealthy enough, you don't have to essentially abide by the rules. Hmm, sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Now they can only do this because there's corrupted government officials, uh, particularly within the Department of Sanitation who take bribes or whatever it is to turn a blind eye to this black market for immunity badges, which these rich people are basically selling and dealing in. So what else is worth noting in this universe? Well, uh, they use a lot of drone technology. All deliveries are done via these bike couriers, these immune bike couriers. So basically, if you're immune in the future, if you have this immune pass, you can basically do whatever you want, okay? You have free reign, you can probably work any job you want. One of the things they don't really explain in the movie is, you know, who's working? Who's producing all this stuff, you know, while all these people are in the quarantine zone and, you know, who's keeping the whole society functioning? They have the police who happen to be in full hazmat gear all the time, but you know, they don't really explain how the society is actually working. Cause at some point people got to go back to work to the processing plants. People got to go and, and till the soil and you know, work the land and grow crops and harvest crops, produce crops, manufacture, distribute all that stuff. That stuff has to get done by somebody. We can't just hide indoors forever. The idea with this movie is that this is the consequence of what happens if this keeps going for three more years. So what else do we have? So we talked about daily virus scans. 
it's illegal to have people at your home, which is pretty much the case right now in a lot of places for Christmas. Uh, they've banned the intermingling of even immediate families. There's these sanitation boxes, which uh, ultraviolet light, which are actually kind of neat, I guess. You know, we were one of the first channels to do videos on ultraviolet light, using that for uh, antiviral purposes. First channel to talk about it right here. You can go and watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. And of course now this is becoming a mainstream idea. And in the future the idea is that you have this box, this uh, UV mailbox, and before you can get your packages, they have to be sanitized by ultraviolet light. So you don't actually have any contact with the outside world. The immune or muni car uh, couriers bring you your stuff. They put it in this box. The ultraviolet light turns on and you grab it from the other side type thing. So the movie itself is really bad in terms of the story. The first 20 minutes are pretty good because you're kind of seeing what this universe is all about and you're getting a little bit of intriguing character development and it's compelling. And even I would say that the whole movie, you keep watching it because there's so many cut scenes and the cinematography is a little over, to, over the top at times, enough to hold your attention anyways. So that's why I don't think the movie deserves a one out of 10. I would actually say the first 20 minutes or so probably you know, should get like a, at least a six out of 10 type thing. But after that, there's definitely a, a sharp decline. And you can tell that they didn't have a lot of time to put this uh, movie together in, in any meaningful way. It's only an hour and 24 minutes long. They didn't go into any great depth about the Q zones and stuff like that. But basically you get the point is that the government's corrupt, the elites have free reign to do whatever they want essentially, and uh, all the poor people who don't comply are thrown in Q zones. So it's safe to say why they didn't want this movie to go mainstream because it might feed that portion of society right now who is highly suspicious of uh, any sort of intervention around this sort. Now, herein lies the problem though, is that what this movie is uh, telegraphing is that should we continue with this approach to how we're dealing with this current situation, this movie may well resemble what the end result might be, okay? It might maybe not so comical, like a lot of the villains are, are very uh, cartoony almost. Like the main villain, he's kind of like a cross between like a Bobcat Goldweight and a Joker type character, you know, really silly, over the top, you know, overly evil, you know, is just out to throw people in this sanitation camp. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The movie tries to be serious, but it throws these cartoony villains at you, which kind of spoils the whole thing. It spoils the plausibility of it. Okay. I wouldn't even say the movie is necessarily worth watching because it's gonna cost you 15 bucks just to rent, and it's not even an Ultra HD, it's only an HD, you can rent it for 15 bucks off YouTube. I personally don't really think it's necessary. Uh, if you've watched this video so far, you are kind of already get the gist of it. There's probably one or two little Easter eggs in there that I might have missed, but by and large, I combed the movie pretty good. I tried to get as much as I could out of it. And uh, basically what I've told you today is, is what you're gonna get, okay? The virus apparently mutates to attack the brain and you know it's a militant draconian society. There are certain people who pay these elites who are running this black market for immunity passes, they pay them to basically tip off the checkpoint guard so that they can travel freely without restrictions. So basically, if you have money, you know, you can do what you want. If you're wealthy enough, you're gonna be able to do what you want. Everybody else who's poor uh, is going to be kind of at the whim of whatever the government kicks down to you, which is probably gonna be scraps, okay? So the elites have special privileges. Really nothing new there under the sun, right? So I'm not sure what the culture is around critiquing movies, if it's a tight-knit group of people, you know, who kind of control what comes up on Rotten Tomatoes and determines, because that's a big factor in terms of, you know, which media agencies are gonna pick up a film to, to show it, license it, to show it like on Netflix or YouTube or Hulu or whatever is out there nowadays, Apple TV. 
So that has a big effect on the exposure that it's gonna get. And it almost seems like they're trying to avoid giving this movie any kind of exposure. Like I said, even if it did, it's gonna get generally bad reviews, probably like a three or four out of 10, but certainly not a one out of 10, okay? So there's definitely some political motivations to suppress this film. They're saying because they thought it was insensitive and uh, they thought that it would undermine maybe government efforts to get the situation under control. But I think the message in the movie is pretty evident. You know, this is what could potentially happen if this thing really became, you know, more lethal than it actually is. The only reason why I watch these movies is because, like I said before, life tends to imitate art. Oftentimes when these movie producers and directors are brainstorming these films, they are trying to make it somewhat plausible. And as such, they may be making predictions that are relatively accurate, okay? And I'm not saying that we're gonna see cartoon villains, you know, throwing people in Q-zones anytime soon. I don't think that's gonna be the case. But, you know, if this thing carries out, if the whole jab doesn't work, as well as they thought, or if the thing mutates and, you know, they got to do a whole other round of uh, jabbing people and whatever, then, you know, this could potentially get out of control. We're already in pretty deep waters, economically speaking. A lot of people, I, they're going to be throwing people 600 bucks or something like that, which is absolutely appalling that, you know, all of these small businesses that have went under. One other thing they mentioned in the movie is that the immunity pass is kind of a double-edged sword and it's a mixed blessing because while it does allow you to, you know, kind of do whatever you want, it also means that you can't have any contact really with anybody because, or unless the other person is immune. And that's because you run the risk of being an asymptomatic carrier or you could still carry it or transmit the virus. So, you live a very lonely life of solitude by yourself. Uh, so that's one of the downsides, but they only briefly touched on that. Like I said, this movie is not very deep. It's very trendy right now to criticize the movie and talk about how bad it was. And, you know, I think a lot of that again is, if, if you take that political component out of it, was it a one out of 10 movie? No, three out of 10, yeah, maybe, you know. I'd probably give it like a 3.5 to four out of 10 just because the main character was actually pretty good, I thought. I mean, you know, as far as these things go, uh, wasn't too bad. Demi Moore did a decent job at what she did, and the guy who played her husband was decent. A little over the top once again, and, you know, some of the extreme lengths that they went to in the movie, which were just kind of unprecedented. But aside from that, uh, yeah, it wasn't very good. Okay, so would not recommend going and watching this movie if you're tight on cash, okay? It's not a worthy investment. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie, if you've seen it. Do you want me to do more movie reviews like this? Do you want me to go through the movie, you know, point by point, picking things out? There wasn't a whole lot in this movie in terms of preparedness education, unfortunately. Uh, the only thing is, is that if you're trapped in the city when this kind of shit goes down, you're pretty much screwed, okay? You need to already have bugged out, you know, before all this stuff can happen. And it follows that classic layout of the post-apocalypse where you have these pockets of excessive rule of law, dictatorships, authoritarian rules, strict government controls amidst a sea of anarchy and chaos out there in the wasteland. Okay, so that's basically was the plot in the movie. Let me know what you thought about in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my last video, Gray Man versus Tactical. I think you'll enjoy it. Canadian Prepper out. And if I don't see you before then, Merry Christmas. Take care. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.